Yeah, yeah, I used to play ball in high, uh, high school. Yeah. You said soccer. What was your position in soccer? Uh, forward. I was a forward. Okay. I was fast. I was, I was fast, but I, I couldn't. I, I, I was a great passer, but you couldn't like, finish. I couldn't finish. <laughs> It's fucking horrible, bro. <laughs> it was bad. Nah. They were like, run to me, run, run, run to me. It's like, fuck it. Hell. I, I'll get the ball back. Oh, nice, nice assist. Did you record it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm blessed. No, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah, we just cut it out. All right, what's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Free Shots Tequila podcast with myself, Marvin Abbey. What's he got in the studio? He's a black. And, um, no mistakes exposed, but it is what it is, though. <laughs> Uh, but this is a, we haven't recorded on a. This is a separate day, by the way. This is not our normal Tuesday recording, so we've had to accommodate. But it's cool. We've got a very, very special guest. Can we just know your name, brother, and where you're from? Uh, Butterscotch. I am from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that the nickname, Butterscotch? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But... Why Butterscotch though? I don't know. It it just it just stuck, man. You know, it just stuck. What is that like a Nigerian thing or, or you? No, thing? no, no. It was like I I, I created a character. Okay. Yeah, I'll put like a face cream on and I'll just. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Sexy Nigerian Butterscotch, yeah. The funny thing is, that's something that someone in Nigeria would actually say. Like, yeah. They're trying to romance. <laughs> they're trying to romance the babes. They say, "Come on, I'm your butterscotch king." I'm the butterscotch king. And, and the thing is, butterscotch is not even sweet. That's the funny <laughs> thing. But because it sounds good, it sounds they would good. say, "I'm yeah. sweet like butterscotch, baby." You <laughs> like, what you were saying the other day when we spoke so, on the phone. You talking about um, Nigerians? What do you mean? Remember, you was, you was, you was, frust, you was frustrated What's about this whole Yoruba demon, leave oh. Nigerian men alone, but these times, that's who you're... Oh, late, no, that's no, who no they so I wrote bedroom. a caption on my um, page mm. because I had, like, a BMW I was testing out. So I was... It's like, I put the Night Rider theme on and then, you know, like, Night Rider's got this whole monologue where they talk about it and I think I said, we live in a world where blah, 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 where women complain about Nigerian men in the daytime, mm -hmm. but go and see them at night time. Mm -hmm. So... We kind of spoke about the kind of Yoruba demon thing, but as much as girls cuss Nigerian men, they love us the most. So oh, it's yeah. like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I think it's because sometimes they get so they love us so much they get so disappointed with us. Sometimes. Oh, you think? You think yeah, yeah. They're like, damn, I wish you could be better because you're you're awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I'm but if I'm awesome, how do I get better? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> I don't get better all the time. <laughs> you get awesomer. Eh? No, is that a word? No. I get it, I get it. Because I I hear what you're saying. Like, yeah. they they hate us so much, but they love us at the same time. Yeah. And it's just frustrating when you hear it because it's just like, oh, where are you from? Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know, I think it is with, with Nigeria, man. I think because we're, we're, we're generous and we're good looking and we're this, we're that. So I think ab above other men in our community, we stand out. But then yeah. it's like, but you're still men, man. Like yeah. I think it's that. that, that I think it's the potential too. Like mm. we're the dopest, but there's even more potential to be even dope. And sometimes we're just like we already know we dope. And you, I think Yoruba plays a part as well. Mm. I think it's the best language in the world. Mm. Mm. I, I, it's it's just funny. Every, everything said in Yoruba is. It sounds funny. Oh, bro, it's 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 either it sounds funny, it's a uh, sweet. I think about a Nigerian man toasting a girl. Come on, man! You, you <laughs> yeah, you can't get better than that. Anyway, well, you're, you're half, smooth. you're half, right? Yeah, half Yoruba, half Igbo. That's, a, that's an interesting mix, though. Yeah, it never happens, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. mad. You, you get a Christian Muslim, <laughs> but Igbo Yoruba is like. It yeah, I read happen. that and I was like, that's that's interesting. Where did they meet? They met actually in the states, bro. They met oh. in the states, but like, it's so crazy because. Growing up, the families didn't rock with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just like, I, I got all these cousins, but I don't know any of them. Serious? Yeah, yeah. My mom has 11 brothers and sisters. They were all like, ah, you're with the Yoruba boy. Were they in America as well? So my mom brought them, yeah. So when okay. they got here, it was like, it was like, nah, you guys figure it out on your own since you guys chose each other. So it was just like knowing that none of the family rocked, it was like, damn, all right, cool. We're going to figure it out. So Even what? after time? At the time, maybe because sometimes you know they kind of some people after time just nah, like you know they stubborn, warm bro. to it and then they're like, all right, cool. No, nah, we're stubborn, you know. So it took maybe maybe when I went to college after out of the house, yeah. And they were like, all right, well, you guys have been together for almost twenty years now, so I guess we have to. Oh, so I guess you're cool now. Yeah, crazy. Oh, twenty years. Twenty years. Bro. Nigeria, that, that's what I would say. Nigerians are stubborn, though. Yeah. Oh, for like, sure. As a people, we're yeah. resilient. We're go getters, but we're stubborn. I've bro. never heard my dad apologize. It's crazy. Do you apologize though? 
Yeah, if I'm yeah. in the wrong, I, I I might give you a bit a bit of pushback. Yeah, but eventually I'll go back and be like, you know, mm, all right, cool, I was wrong, mm-hmm. I apologize. But my dad, never get over it, man. Like, I've heard my dad apologize on. one time, bro. Yeah, see, yeah, to I never you. thought about that. Yeah, that's crazy. I never thought how, about it. How? How did he apologize to you? Was it an apology or yeah. was it? Yeah, let me think are about you it. Are you hungry? Like, <laughs> they love that one. I was like, you apologize. Are you, are you hungry? hungry? Are you hungry? Yeah, I take the food, man. <laughs> I think it was, damn, it was maybe once when I was 17. Like, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. But did, you speak on, yeah, but did you stick it on him? Or he just came to you and said, oh. I didn't, it happened so fast, I didn't know. What, I was like, no, nah, it didn't happen. He didn't say that. I didn't know if he said it for real or not, but it was, yeah, it was crazy, bro. Yeah, crazy. For, for your for African parent to apologize, that's like, boy. Yeah, bro. Once. To be honest, my mom, my mom would. Nah, that's, that's, that's what they say, mom. My mom would. Dad? Yeah. Nah, actually, my dad, would have, my dad would have as well, but but he never really said anything like that. As in, or he wasn't like the usual African dad. So he was cool. Like he was so he cool. was cool. He, he was, was quiet. He was the quiet yeah, one. Yeah, he was like the quiet one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there was nothing really to apologize for because he was never like, do this, do that. Oh, no. So I'm saying my mum mm. was the one who was a bit more vocal, but then she would apologize because uh, women tend to be able to apologize if they need to. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But yeah. again, African parents still see you as oh yeah, yeah, a they kid. Need, so yeah. nah, I don't need to apologize. Yeah, no matter what age kid. you get to, boy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they still do. Would, so, you, ra- would you raise your child the same way? No. I've I've said it I've said it to my mom and dad. Oh, dope. No, I can't. Like, like, there's elements I will take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes it was a bit too much, man. It was yeah. way too much. I'm just like, come on, man. Mm. And sometimes I feel like you got to give your kids like the freedom to make mistakes as well, and then you be there to kind of guide them. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just tell them, no, this is what you have to do. This is the road you take. This is how you make it. It's, yeah. it's gonna build a. And, yeah. I, and that's that's what it was building until. Mm. And I've mentioned it on the previous episode before where until like my dad got arrested. Mm. So he got taken from the house as opposed to him leaving. Oh wow. And then wow. that kind of made it a lot easier, but it happened when I was like 21, 22. Oh, okay. so yeah, time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, then yeah. when I when turning 23, 24 was a lot more easier. I didn't feel like I had the pressure of my dad being on my back. Yeah. And then my mom was grateful for it. My mom was like, "Do you know what? I saw it in you." Yeah. But again, she was someone who was under my dad's farm as well, so it was hard, mm-hmm. but when my dad left the house, mm-hmm. everyone just became their own person, and it's just lovely to see my sister and my lo- my younger brothers. That's dope, bro. Uh, dope, but I understand. Like, nah, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah do you know what I mean, for me, like being a new father, right? I'm starting the habit now instead of saying, "No, don't do that, don't do that." If he's doing something, I'll try to just redirect his attention, so it doesn't feel like he's getting commands. It's more of like figuring it out and being supportive of what he's doing. So little things like that, it's teaching me, but also teaching him that it's like. You know, my dad is there, but he's not. I have freedom to do whatever I want yeah, in a yeah. way, but instead of no, 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 that's it starts becoming like, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. and we don't realize the anxiety it brings as yeah. as kids, man. You know, from a young age. But I think it's also important for you to explain as well. If you're telling your child exactly. something, if they're at an age to understand, you can be like, listen, don't do that. The reason why you don't do that, so they understand that exactly. The time, we never the got time. that, bro. Yeah, we just got told, stop. stop that. Are you, are, are you mad? Why? Because and then, this is so... And that's it. Yeah. And you can never... You, even, if you, even if you said, why? Are you, are you talking to me? You want yeah, to hit me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're thinking, well, my hands were by my side. <laughs> like, I wasn't even trying to do anything. Even, even your mom or dad tells you to put something somewhere. You're like, uh, where should I put it? On, On my, my head. head. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> But you know what it is? Like, they're all the same. You know what yeah. the same. Like, no matter where you are and, like, no matter where, like, yeah. all the Nigerians, Poland, yeah. wherever <laughs> it is, they're all the... We've all got the same story, You bro. can say Yugoslavia, innit? No, no, no. What no, were no. you going to say? You said Poland. <laughs> I was going to say Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. But I Ukraine. thought, you know what? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even when, um, do, you, do, you have, do you have this one? You know that like when your mum's upstairs and you're downstairs or your mum's downstairs, you're yeah. upstairs and they call your name. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to say yes from your room. You have to come downstairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. One time I came down, one time I'm saying yes, yes, no answer. So I've come downstairs. Mm-hmm. Yes, mum. So why did you say yes when you were upstairs? I'm like, because you called me. She yeah. goes, how'd you know it wasn't spirits? I yeah. said, oh my oh. days. Nah, I ain't heard that one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's different. That's different. Like, yeah. like, you got to make sure that you, you approach the person you think is calling your name. Hmm. So, all right, cool. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Tell you, it was stressed in my house, bro. Nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had the one where my mum would call from upstairs. Marvin. Mm. Marvin. Yes, mum. Marvin. Just keep on. <laughs> Marvin. Yes, mum. Marvin. That's fuck. Then you when know. I go upstairs, that's when she'll tell me what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah. like, but what you're telling me about is it's downstairs. downstairs. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I've come all the way upstairs for you to tell me to do something downstairs where you could have just said to me from upstairs, 
can you do so and so? But in their mind, they're like, I don't want to shout. Yeah. So I'm shouting your name. This that's enough. Mm-hmm. When you come up here, I'll tell you, oh, go on, what's the plates? But mom, the kitchen is downstairs. <laughs> yeah. My mom was on a vibe of you, I can't tell you mm. from downstairs. I don't know who I'm talking to. For me, it was Roti me. Yeah. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Yeah, Dad. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, just want to make sure you're okay. And there'll be three minutes of silence. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> is there something else? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, no, it's okay, okay. All right. And you don't know if you're supposed to walk off. If, you know what I mean? So it's just, man, that anxiety was crazy. I didn't even realize how much anxiety from the simple things we dealt with, we actually dealt with, bro. You know what's funny? Yeah. Now you say anxiety, yeah? Yeah. I never thought it was anxiety at the time. I just it's thought normal. this was normal. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you thought it was normal. But, then, but the thing is, what is normal, though? Mm. That's subjective, bro. Because no, but mm. that fear of but fear of your parents is not normal. Yeah, I hear you. No, but I hear. No, that, that's the, no, no. The fear that we the, when I oh, say fear, the, yeah, 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 okay, the okay. fear we had is different to. But my, my, yeah. my, my, my Caribbean friends, yeah. They, for example, they're playing out. It hits like seven o'clock. Mm. They're not rushing to get home. They're just like ah, oh, seven fifteen. My mom will be cool. That's big true. big man. If I don't get in at seven, seven o one. Problems. Bro, that's like, true. Yo, why didn't you get in? I said, you should have left earlier. But, but mom, like, you know where I am. Like, I'm li- <laughs> Problems. Yeah, but I hear what you're saying, but I feel like those kind of things helped because I'm not saying all your friends are in a bad place, but a lot of them man there, prison, done mm. mad things. You had to be home because there was nothing out there at that age for you. Mm, yeah, true, mm. true. So mm. it's kind of, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a catch-22, yeah, though. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we talk about our parents being very harsh on us, but... As kids, you don't really know what you're doing and you're influenced a lot by what goes on outside of your house. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. So when you think about it, like you you had to be in sometimes. It was good for you. What was it like growing up in uh, America? Um, J- Jersey, right? Jersey, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, having Nigerian parents, bro, like I had a like a, a, a understanding of structure, discipline, um, how to be a go-getter. Like you can't make an excuse. My mom and my dad came here homeless. So to see them go from homeless to then college graduates to PhD, I had no excuse. You know, I was the only child too. So like all the attention was on me. But it was dope because my mom, when she was pregnant with me, she had a dream that, you know, she had a, a dream that Bob Marley came to her and said, your son will finish my legacy. So with that, she came out like, is he either going to be a lawyer or is he going to be a musician or what? So when I started singing at three, usually he knows how, I don't know how it is here for sure, but like, Nigerian parents, there's no creativity. It's yeah, yeah, l- yeah. lawyer, doctor, mm. entertainer, you know what I mean? So for me, with that, she was like, you can sing, I'm your manager. So my mom, who has no idea about music business, is my manager. So she had me sing. I was a Nigerian wedding singer when I was four years old to eight, bro. Like just going from <laughs> Philadelphia, Connecticut. That's dope still. Yeah, you know what I mean? So she was super supportive, had me in the hood recording. Like, did you write your song today? I said, yeah, I wrote it in, in fifth period. Okay, let's take it to, like, that type of love, you know? And so my dad, when I was younger, he was much quieter. But then as I got older, he started being real, real vocal, you know, and, and, and supportive. But, yeah, I've always had the love. I always had the support. But always had the mindset, I got to be the best, man. I can't. There's no excuse. You got to milk every situation. Just And that, that st- st- uh, stuck with me to now. Like for you know, if your mom's t- taking you around singing from four, that would have definitely built your, especially singing as well, that would have built your confidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, like, my mindset is like, there's nothing I can't do because literally, like, I was playing soccer, I was in the choir, I was basketball, I was playing football, was, and so they had me doing everything, you know? And so, like, my mindset, that's why I can do music and acting today because I've been doing six, seven things since I was a kid, yeah. you know? You know what's funny to me is that when you're, your mum said Bob Marley came to her in the dream and she yeah. said, is he going to be a lawyer? Like, Bob Marley was no lawyer, bro. <laughs> like, Nigerians always try and find, is he going to be a lawyer, engineer, doctor? <laughs> Bob Marley was a singer, aren't he? Like, there's only one thing, only one way back to finish his legacy is a singer. Uh, <laughs> can he be a lawyer? Maybe, maybe an activist. <laughs> maybe an activist, you know? You can sing songs. But you know what's mad, yeah? For as much as Nigerian parents mm. love... Um, lawyer, doctor, whatever, they love a good party. Yes. Who's singing on the stage? Mm. Yeah, Sheila DJ, Peters, yeah, um, Sunny Ade, all these people, like, they're performers. Yeah. But it's like, you don't want your kid to be fella and all these, but you want... So who's going to run the party then? Yeah, but, you know, yeah. Yeah, but I guess it's the, um, the... What's it called? The other side of um, performing. 
Mm. Like the, do you know what I mean? Like the, forget yeah. the glitz and glamour, the yeah. actual talent. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. what comes with it, I guess, that they're worried about. And I think it's oh, the, okay. yeah, the risk. Yeah. The risk of even like everybody wants to do it. This, I know you can do it. I can teach you how to do it. If you just study this way, I can yeah. do this. The structure. Yeah. You're always going to get a job. Always Someone always a job. wants a lawyer. Someone always needs an accountant. But exactly. singer, you've got to be great. Yeah, bro. And I think the opportunities that our parents had, nothing was given to them. Exactly. So they needed something that was surefire, exactly. as in 100%, like, going to give me the best chance of a job. Yes, yes. If I study um, law... Or, I can control this. And no one can take it away from yeah. me. There's, no one can say tomorrow is pulled for you. No, I've got the papers. Look, I've, I've studied... I got a job, so I, I kind of get where they're coming from. Whereas our gen and the gens after us, oh, yeah. there's Different. more We're like, stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But what structure? How much of the structure do you think we'll take into the next generation? Though, do you think like we'll be like, eh, you could be whatever you want, or is it still instinctively like, no, you need this, you need school, you need this? What do you think? I, I think we're definitely gonna be that. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I feel like school's a good base anyway in, in general just to teach you because mm-hmm. the thing is I feel like if you don't know what you're going to do mm-hmm. finish school as in right. go to university like if for example you finish college and you're like I want to be an engineer alright mm-hmm. then you don't have to go to university you can yeah. just do an apprenticeship you but can do something control. else and, and get into that um, industry from now mm-hmm. and build your experience whereas if you're not sure while you're thinking of it just go uni gain something on paper mm-hmm. while you're working at that's, that's how I feel like it should be mm-hmm. but Every parent's different. Do you know what I'm saying? I agree with that, yeah, but it, it just sounds different when you're 16. That's the only thing. Yeah. When you're yeah. 16 and you're, and you're just like, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know why the result is even college or even uni, I don't want to do it. Whereas what you're saying makes sense. Finish it. Even like for anyone that wants to get into like any job where you deal with people, yeah. I will always recommend that they do retail mm. for like mm. six months or a year. Mm. Just do retail. The level of patience that you you download, yeah? Mm. Oh, customer service, all of that stuff. You learn that on the job. Whereas if you get thrown in it, you've never done it, you're mm-hmm. instantly going to panic because it's annoying. I, I can't yeah. lie to you. Dealing with people yeah, yeah. just on a day-to-day. Yeah. So imagine having to do it where the person is under the assumption that they're always right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you have to kind of go through that. So then when you now develop whatever it is you want to do, if it's like you're selling a product, for example, mm-hmm. Obviously, when we talk about it, it's like, ah, oh, being on the streets, da, da, but all of that stuff that we were doing, chilling on the block, chatting to Giala, da, 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 it's mm. helped us to be able to speak, speak. Yes, confidently. Yeah, it adds up, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, that's something that I would add as well. Did you ever work in any jobs that you didn't want to do or anything like I that? I had one job when I was 16. It was uh, stocking fridges at a spot called J, J, J Mims or something like that. I said, I'll never do this again. And then dude was like, Rock me, dum, dum, dum. I said, oh, yeah, fuck you, bro. I'm not doing it. You're not going to tell me what the fuck this. It was like literally, bro. Like I said, I'll never work. And you don't know the power of tongue at that age. I said, I'll never work for anybody in my life again, yo. And and that was three days. I never. What was it paying? Three days? Yeah, three days, bro. I quit. What was it paying? Like, was it? Shit, like you know? $6 an hour? $6 an hour? Yeah. Stacking fridges, you know. Stacking fridges, bro. Cold as hell. Man. And it's the way they talk to you, literally. Yeah, in, in their no type respect. of jobs, it's the way they talk to you, man. It's like no respect. It's like you're, you're scum. Like, yeah, like you're just this. a number. Like, like you like you begged. And, and in your mind, you, I didn't beg for this job. Yeah. I just, I just <laughs> wanted something on the side. You're talking to me as if I begged it for this job. Right. Like, I need it. I don't need it, big man. So you're getting, you get getting, apron, man. You're getting this ty- type of talk at home, this type of talk at work. Your teacher talking to you like this is like, oh, man, nah, bro. It's too much for me, man. I was like, nah, I, I, gotta be, I just got to be creative, man. So I see in your uh, school it says that you um, you were doing choir in high school and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I thought that's where your music career started. No. But you already said that your mum had the dream and then you started from like four... Four or five years old. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the choir was what, the next step so, in the music career? So what happened was when I was 15, um, I performed at the Apollo Theater. Okay. And so the Apollo Theater, you familiar with the Apollo Theater in, in, in New York? No, nah, we, we okay. know that we got we got an Apollo here, which is famous for like comedians and. Okay, it's like it's like uh, historic. It's yeah, like legendary, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's legendary for for musicians. So Michael Jackson, James Brown, all of them started there. Everybody okay. that was legendary did there. So I did that twice, <clears throat> and I won. Like I won the competition, so that gave me the confidence. Like, oh wow, like you're really dope. And then what happened was. What year was that? Sorry, roughly. Uh, two thousand. Wow, two thousand three. Okay, okay. So then Jay Z's nephews. They, I always grew up with Jay-Z's nephews, but they wanted to do music. And we were like 16, 17. They were like, we formed a group. And they were like, yo, if we're going to do this the right way, Hove wants us to perform in his living room every week, every weekend while he's in town. So we got to write everything and perform in front of Jay-Z. So it was like, oh, wow. So every Saturday for about five weeks, we write, 
get on the uh, get on the bus, go sit with Jay, and perform our songs. Fam. That's dope, still. So at that point, it was like ah, it's whack. Ah, I love that. Yo, Ro, da 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 da. So you're learning how to be an artist in front of one of the greatest yeah, rappers yeah, yeah. of all time. So again, confidence. And then when I went to college, <clears throat> that's when it really took off in terms of confidence. Like, all right, I'm winning every band show competition, opening for every artist that came to our, our school. And that's when it just kept rolling, rolling, rolling. So for me, the funny thing is, acting came when I was 22 and I was broke as an artist. And I was like, I need a job. I, and my manager was like, you're always really dope in music videos. Why don't you just, you're, you're comfortable in front of the camera. Why don't you just try acting? No agency wanted to take me because I had no resume. Okay. So the only agency that took me in was only because her son was a freshman at my school. So she was taking care of alumni. She was like, if you need something, let's try so I signed on a Monday. She said, yo, there's a TV show called Boss with Kelsey Grammer that's uh, auditioning on Wednesday. Do you want to try? I was like, yeah. She's like, just, you're not going to get it. I'm like, don't just get used to casting directors. Like, like just, just, just fill it out. Bro, I go in there, and I end up booking the job. So Sick. my first audition, you go ahead. I got it. So I don't even know what acting is. I've never looked at a script. I don't know. I'm like, where am I supposed to stand? Okay, camera left, camera right. And I booked my first job, so I got thrown into the acting. So, how, so, so, right, so you went to the you went to the casting. They yeah. gave you the script and said, "All right, do this line." Yeah, you've never done it before. Never. So, never. how did you like get into that space? You're like, you know what? I, <clears throat> in the character, you just bro. It was sink or swim, and and you know what? When she said you're not gonna get it, it basically gave me that like, okay, well, let me just. If I'm not gonna get it. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, you had well, that release of just nothing to lose. Kind yeah, of I got nothing to lose. So yeah. it was like that energy, but I didn't know at the time I had a photographic memory, so I can look at something, and okay, cool, cool, cool. I didn't know that that's what it was. So I got, I got it, and it was just, all right, well, can you try it this way? Can you try it this way? I didn't know I'd done the character eight to ten different ways. I had no idea. So they're all looking like, so this is your how long have you been acting? I said, um, this is my first day. And it was just like, wow. So three weeks later, they called me. I got it. So imagine you get a contract for six figures, and you have no idea what you're walking into. So it was the scariest day of my life, not knowing I'm an actor. I don't know anything about this, and I'm getting paid this money, so I have to deliver. So that's when it was like, all right, let me just put music away for a second. This is 2000. Okay. Yeah, so it's 2012. So it's like, let me put music away. Let me learn this. And I did that show for two years, and you know that was that was one of the best experiences. Kelsey Grammer is Fraser. Yeah, Fraser. Fraser. Yeah, girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fraser. That's yeah. one of my favorite programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fraser, Girlfriend. Fraser's, Fraser's dope. Yeah, Fraser's girl, dope. No, girlfriends. The funny thing about <clears throat> girlfriends, I was watching the other day. Mm -hmm. Actually, nah, a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was myself up. No, I'm joking. I watched it the other day, and Girlfriends <laughs> is more relevant now than it was then. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's no, crazy. No, 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 some, crazy. Some of the stuff I'm watching, I'm like, this shit's happening like No, but I don't, now, I don't think bro. it wasn't relevant. I just think we didn't understand oh, we didn't it. Understand. No, I, I, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did. Because I watched it now, and I'm like, wait, no, but society. That's what they talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But society's changed. Oh. And it's still relevant. That's what I'm saying. So in the, I don't know how <coughs> relevant. Remember, maybe because we were young, I didn't know how relevant it was then because I wasn't in the streets like that. Yeah. Mm. But That's now what I'm, I'm older, I'm like, this shit is relevant now. now. So I don't know if it was it's, then. It's, a, it's an amazing show. Even the friendship dynamic between the... Like the different colors. Learned, and listen, like... I've learned a lot from women from watching girlfriends, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Kelsey Grammer. It I think like, what I was going to say, my introduction to you is obviously yeah. power. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so obviously when I, when I saw that you were doing music, I was like, hold on, wait. So it, to me, it's like actor. Yeah, that's what it looked yeah, like. Yeah. yeah, whereas it's the other way around. It's the other way around. And that's the funny part about it is just that you hit lightning in a bottle with something so massive, you know, it's just like, okay, cool. But I had to like I had to sacrifice what I passionately love to do to learn something that was giving me a lot. So how many how many acting things? Because I don't know I've seen you in Deuces. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think is it Diver Divergent? Divergent, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are the only two I've seen you in. But what, yeah. how many other stuff have you done before you booked Power? Before I booked Power, uh, Boss. I did Boss. Um, I did a, a movie with me and John Boyega. Uh, we did a movie. Um, I did Black Nativity. Um, so about four 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 things before power yeah about four things before power but dude like even right before power bro like the illest thing my dad did was when i made the money that i made on the first uh show that i had he put it aside he was like if you're an okay let me backstroke 
So the show got canceled, and I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? I, I, I don't audition, da, 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 da. At that point in time, 2014, it was the worst year of my life because I, I was in a bad relationship, my management, my this, everything was just falling apart. And I moved to Atlanta. And I was like, I'm going to just focus on music. I got time. I don't have a job, so let me just focus on music. So my dad was like, if you want to make it in music, I'm going to put this money aside and give you about $40,000 and figure it out of your money. Figure it out. You can't touch this. Make it work. And so by the time I was down to my like last five grand, my man, my agent called. He was like, yo, there's a TV show called Power that wants you to audition for this just Dre role. I was like, Who's, what show is this? At the time, this, it was the first season out, but nobody had watched it. I was like, oh, Power. It was a 50 Cent show. 50 Cent TV? Bro, I'm not doing that. What the hell? He was like, bro, I think it's a special script. Like, I said, all right, cool. So is it in Atlanta? He's like, nah, you got to fly yourself to LA. So I had to fly myself to LA. He's like, but you got to put yourself up because if you if they like you, they want to see you probably for like a, a good two, three week span. So I'm like, damn, I got to put myself up, fly myself. Five grams got stripped for three weeks in LA. In LA. Jesus. <laughs> Shit, all right. He's like, bro, please, please, just please. Ultimately, it's my decision. Yeah. Bro, I remember sitting back. I was like, I asked my man, I was like, yo, bro, should I go? Dog, uh, one said, "Man, fuck no, bro." Like, nigga, do, 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 do. One was like, "Go, bro." And the way it was like, "Go," it was like, oh, "Okay, I don't know what my purpose is, but let me just." So I get to LA, and it's crazy, man. I was like, "Damn, I gotta stay in a motel." I was like, "I, I could do thirty dollars a day in a motel." So I'm in the hood, in like with the with the essays. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like. Crazy. What you do around here, ho? <laughs> yeah, yo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in, and they're like, yo, we love you. So I was like, okay, cool. So you're excited, but then you're like, oh, shit, that means I got to stay. So that means I got to pay every day. So waiting, waiting, waiting. It took about a week or so. I'm like, okay, so all right, cool. All right, so I got something to do. Go back. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, next time we want um do this, do this, do this. This is the last step. I was like, cool. So now I'm spending food, spending money. Da, 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 da. I'm down to maybe like fifteen hundred, bro. And they called. They were like, oh, "You got it." And it was just like, "Whoa!" So I learned to bet on myself. I learned to trust my intuition. I learned that you got to go get it, man. Go ma manage your money as you well. Manage, and that's how I learned how to manage my money. So my dad, by my dad doing that, I felt the sense of urgency, and I kept that same thing. So I was like, you know what? If I really believe I'm a musician. I'm not going to spend a dollar of my power money. I'm going to just save every season. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to live off of my hosting show and endorsement. And that's what I did. Sick, man. Yeah, yeah. What was it like meeting 50? Oh. <laughs> Intimidating at first, because you don't know. Like, you hear the stories, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? But 50 looks intimidating. Yeah, but... like. Even the way he talks, it, just, it looks like he doesn't give off a lot at first. But then if he likes you, he warms to you. If he doesn't, you're, you're just getting that. Yeah. That Even though he does that thing, he does. Yeah. It's on thing he does. When you see that when he's on TV, he's like, I don't like the way he talks to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it's just like, ooh. Like, yeah, yeah. 50 just looks very, like, the moment he walks in the room, he looks like he... he he, he demands to tell you. Yeah, he, he looks like he doesn't mind people being uncomfortable. Yeah, he loves like, it. Like, he likes it. It looks like he likes he people being in that space. He loves it. And you got to be a certain type of a dog to be around him. Like, the thing is, man, like, he, he's he's one of the most kindest people. Yeah, he looks it. Kind, if he, like you said, like, if he rocks with you, kind, man. But if he doesn't, oh, my God, bro. It's like, you just don't want to be around him. And he'll make you feel uncomfortable. He'll make it just weird. And you just got to go. So, but meeting him, man, it was, it was, again, I met him, I met him at work, you know, so he loved my professional, my professionalism. He loved how focused I was. And for like six, seven months, he didn't know I did music. I was like, ah, because I remember somebody came to him. It was season two. Somebody came to him. We were on the street filming. Somebody was like, yo, Fib, I got a mixtape, man. He was like, all right, for sure. He was like, yeah, 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 come in back. I thought, like, hey, anybody <laughs> listening to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> said, you can imagine if he did that as well. I said, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I'm not going to ask him about no music, nothing. And so, damn, that's even a crazy story, how, how I got my deal. So, basically... One night, I go to the studio with these producers I don't know. And um, this is when Snapchat had first come out. So the producers had won a contest that 
if they have the best beat, whoever somebody from a label is gonna come and take more beats yeah. from them in the studio. So they were like, yo, bro, do you mind if somebody comes in and, and, and listens to something? We gotta just pass files. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. So the guy comes in. So the guy comes in, his name's Tony G. Tony G comes in, he was like, yo, so what do you do? I'm like, yeah, I'm an artist. He was like, oh, this is your song playing right now? I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, I make a lot of music for, I mean, I I, I make, yeah, I, I produce and I make a lot of music for like Kendrick Lamar, 50. I said, oh, that's funny. Like, I work with 50. I'm filming a TV show called Power with 50. He was like, bro, I'm the head of G Unit. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the a and head A&R at Unit. Come to the office. He's like, so 50 doesn't know you do music? I was like, nah, he doesn't. He was like, oh, that's crazy. I right, so come tomorrow. Bro, so I go tomorrow, the next day, and my meeting was at 1 o'clock. I was late. I was, I was living in Brooklyn in a studio apartment. I was late. I get there at 2.15. So in these music meetings, you usually play music for about 30 minutes. So you're about to leave. You get there at 1, you leave at 1.30. I got there at 2, 2.15. So when I'm playing the records, 50 then walks in. So if I was on time, I would I would have missed him. Mm. He walks in. He's like, yo, bro, what you doing here? I was like, oh, man, you know, Tony brought me in, man. He was like, yeah, you want to hear more music? He's like, you do you do music? He was like, play me. So he comes in and sits down. So I'm like, oh, shit. This is... <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, play that again. So he's doing this, and he just starts smiling and laughing. He's like, play it again. He played the thing for like, Eight times straight, he was like, "You like you got videos and stuff." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you can do this. I got videos." He was like, "Oh, you a full star, bro? Uh, yeah, let's do the deal. I'm gonna get on this verse tonight. Let's do the deal." I said, "I'm gonna get on the verse." Yeah, so the song Lotto that we have is my fr- the record I played for him. He did the verse that night and we put it out, and that was my first single. So I signed, I got my deal signed maybe two three weeks after that. But, but it was. But did you? Use a, I swear there was something like where. 50 Cent created like a fake little beef, no? Between yeah. these two. So, yeah, so yeah. everyone thought they were beefing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone was like, raw, oh, bit 50's beefing. Yeah. And then out of the blue, like, it was like a, pl- a ploy to like get yeah. people to listen to your music or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, so a couple years now, fast forward, it's 2018, and I put my album out, and for like a good week, we had the number one R&B album on iTunes. So we're moving, 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 but... You know, after a while, it, it'll drop. Yeah. So he was like, bro, I got an idea. I'm like, uh, okay. He's like, just follow me, just follow me. Like, All right, cool. Shade Room, two hours later. With Timmy O's, da 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 I'm like, bro, what the fuck? So I'm looking at my team like, yo, we owe him money? What the fuck? What's going on? <laughs> we owe him money? He was like, he called me, he laughed. He's like, look, look, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Watch what I said, bro, like, niggas don't think I'm broke. I'm trying to, like, it was just, it was, it was funny. It was terrifying. But it was like, he was like, listen, just listen. In this problem... I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna say your album is number one at least 25 times while I'm saying I want to break your face, bust your nose, da 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 da. He was like, "Watch what it does," and that's how a lot of people started to like yeah. discovering my music. You got the number one. Well, let me hear this music, and that's when it was like, "Oh wow, he's actually really dope." So it was again marketing genius. But at first it was like, "Yo," so he was like, "Yo, TMZ's gonna call you. Just get up there. This is what you say." I was like, "Oh wow, this is crazy." Yeah, so yeah. Genius. I, knows to I, I, the room, I, Wednesday is going to be a video <coughs> on Shade Room. You say fuck Marv. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, in the UK, we we we're not like we're not at that stage, in it. Mm. But we could be. No, we could be. But I feel like here because it's so small. Yeah. Yeah. People pull up to your house. If I if I say if I say fuck Taser, yeah. Ah. Like we have to explain to too many people before we do it. Like this is what it is because really. People, but, yeah, no, people, but we don't have to. You no, know? but you say that. But people who do you know what it is the problem is yeah. People take sides immediately, yeah? So you will mm. see who's who. And then someone mm. else will start coming out. Oh, so, so, I should have known that Taser guy was sneaky. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, oh, chill out, big man. Really? <laughs> it might be, it might be someone, on my, like someone might be on someone Everyone's on my side saying, showing, no, right, that. I never liked Taser. Yeah. Oh, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so now, even if me and Taser say we're joking, you're, yeah. like some people. you're like, ah, oh, so yeah. you didn't like me. Oh, yeah. you didn't like me. Oh, do you know what I'm saying? It's a bit different over here still. <laughs> to be fair, you probably had that as well, but it's yeah. just because America's so big, mm-hmm. you don't really pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Nah, 50 sick, man. I, I like some of the moves he's made. Yeah. Some of the stories I've heard as well, I heard that um, Uncle Murder was supposed to sign a deal with uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Jay-Z, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. And then, but 
he knows 50. So 50 mm. is like, why didn't you call me? Yeah. So anyway, he was like, oh, I, w- I want to see what Jay Z saying kind of thing. So the day of the meeting, I think an hour before, yeah. Jay Z's ran in the in the room with just mm. him and Uncle Murder. Said, mm. you really gonna sabotage Jay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uncle Murder's like, yo. Yeah. So by the time Jay's come, Uncle Murder's already intimidated. Like, yeah. Oh. And he, and Jay's basically like, alright, cool, sign with him. Let's see what he does with you. Yeah. I'll, I'll hit you back in like six months. Yeah. After like six months a year. Oh, you, you got an album? Yeah. You know the one? Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah. He's like, I told you. But, they, but they're, they're friends now, innit? Because I remember yeah. he's, um, he done a show here the other day. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he had um, Uncle Murder and so Yeo come out. Yeah. Mm-hmm, and the attitude that I... Obviously, because I know that they're friends and stuff. Yeah, Some yeah. people look at it as, well, hold on. Why is Uncle Murder and Tony Ayo your hype man? Mm. But in America, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah, yeah. it's normal. Yeah, but yeah. over here, it's kind of like, mm, you're beneath... Really? Yeah, you'll see it as rod. Right. Like you wouldn't, you you wouldn't see an if if both artists are signed, they've got tunes, right. top ten, but you wouldn't see him be a hype man to the next year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So oh, when yeah. I saw it, and I looked, I said, Nah, I get it. I get a hype man's normally like your friend. So for example, if you're if yeah. you're a rapper, yeah. and you've got like a best friend or someone around you, it's not like another that, four that, artist. That will be your hype man. Uh, yeah. Because if you sign someone in your label, yeah, that wouldn't be your hype man. There might be someone who comes out maybe before you. Yeah, yeah. opens for you, but and, it wouldn't be your hype man. And <clears> does <throat> their catalog yeah. and whatever, or comes out on a feature, mm. but it wouldn't be your hype man. But I feel like Fifty's doing it like. I'm just helping the man them eat. Yeah, That's yeah, how he sees it. Yeah, but I think yeah. 50 is one of the only people online that can't be cancelled. No, never. 50 can say anything. anything, bro. I've seen him go at Madonna. I've seen him go Everybody. at... <clears throat> um, he's um, a BM. Like, he goes at anyone. And anyone. the thing is, it's not like... He doesn't um, discriminate. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. gets full smoke. Yeah, everyone. everyone. If you, 50, I think he's got one line where he says, um, I don't want a problem. But if you want a problem, I say no problem. Yeah. I say, <laughs> yo, <laughs> this guy yeah. is like... Yeah. Bro, the way, the way he said it's so calm, I never want a problem. That's him. But if they want a problem, I say no problem. Even, mm-hmm. even um, Fat, Fat, you know, um, Fat Joe's um, episode on expert opinion, Math Hoffer's um, podcast. Mm-hmm. So he's explaining the ins and outs of um, the verses between um, him and Ja Rule. Because mm-hmm. you remember uh, they tried to cancel him because he said, he said something about, ah, uh, something about you loose bitches or you old bitches. But then I think VR and Charlie Baltimore came out. So it's like, ah, yo, you talking about them? And he's like, no, I didn't even know who Ja Rule was going to bring out. I yeah. just said it because I'm in battle yeah. rap mode. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, if I really wanted to get smoky, because basically he said that he saw it as like a money grab, but also something to do f- for the culture. Yeah, yeah. But when he was going out, mm-hmm. like public, yeah. everyone was like, oh, you going to give Ja Rule that smoke? And he's like, wait, you don't want me to go into that bag? Yeah. It's just me, old ladies, young kids. Him, him and Ja Rule are brethren, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they know that. He said yeah. it's very public that they're brethren, but yeah. the way he was meeting people, like going shopping, yeah. everyone's coming up to me, oh, you going to kill Ja Rule, right? He's like, oh, I got to get I got to get into that bag. Yeah. He goes, he, he said he thought about it, bringing out 50. Hmm. Nah, that would have that been a madness. This is what I'm saying, because he said he said he's so, he's so cool and connected that he could have brought out that 50. That would have finished yeah. it. That would have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think they would have had a versus again after that. Yeah, 50 yeah, Cent would have yeah. done it. I don't think 50 Cent would have done it. I don't think 50 would have done it, to be fair. No, 50 nah, looks nah. so petty that he would have. Come he out. Have. 50, 50 Cent looks like the type of person that he was... 50 Cent, yeah, he will come out. Yeah. Mm. He'll be like, yo, if you clear the stage, if you clear the stage, yeah, I'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 50, 50 Cent clear the stage and he'll come about 30 man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he said even oh, Roy. So yeah, he said even Roy Jones even got. Yeah, Roy Jones. Roy Jones, <laughs> Roy Jones on him was, still. Really? What? Yeah. Roy Jones wanted to beat him, him up. Caught him in Ali. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah caught yeah. him in Ali, but luckily, um, Fat Joe wasn't by himself. So oh, when Roy Jones wow. looked over Fat Joe's shoulder, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of man behind him, and Fat Joe said it. He said, "Listen, I said to Roy Jones, you one on one, you'll beat me up. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Where do you think you're gonna sleep?" Mm. <laughs> he said, it's a, like, gangster. and also I didn't mean it like that. Obviously, yeah. no, even Roy did, Jones are forced to leave. Nah, but he's just no, he's not. No, <laughs> I, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. What I mean is, he couldn't roll anything else. <laughs> he wasn't beefing him. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. But, the, the Roy, but the Roy Jones knockout, yeah. There's one knockout where someone knocks him out, and the way he falls back, yeah, he falls yeah. back like that. Yeah. So he's got the line where he says, "Sutton, Sutton, um, lean back." Even Roy Jones forced to lean back, and everyone in the video does that. So obviously it's a reference to Roy J
<laughs> but my man, it's not going to work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like that. Work so out. it would have just been, but I think they kind of squashed, squashed it the and end. then whatever, Jeez. whatever. I mean, in terms of um, R&B and stuff, so who do you listen to? Like, who do you... I'm old school, bro. I listen to a lot of Lauren Hill, Sade, okay. um, Joe, Carl Thomas. Um, that's what I grew up on, man. It's it's hard to find really good music today, bro. Like, in general, it's hard to find, like, music that you're like, you know, I'm a fan of this person, you yeah. know? I feel like, I don't know if social media ruined that because you see them so much or, like, there's no exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... It's hard to have somebody that to to know somebody that has a really good body of work. You know, back in the day, people had bodies of work. You know, I don't think people got the time anymore because mm. even the other day we were just talking like Drake and Twenty One dropped something. Um, who else dropped something? Wizkid just Beyonce, dropped something. Wizkid mm-hmm. just dropped something. Mm-hmm. Beyonce just dropped something. Um, like it's like every before back in the day, it'll be like Mariah Carey would drop something, mm-hmm. and no one's dropping around that time. Yeah. Then maybe a month later, two months later, Jay might drop something. Mm-hmm. A year later, Nas will drop something. Like everyone was dropping, like. Yeah. Whereas now it's like. It's just microwave. Even, it's just quick, so you, you don't have time to, like. Take it in. Yeah. Um, like marinate enjoy it. And, yeah. yeah or enjoy exactly. a project. Yeah. Because by the time you listen to that, already you're hearing about a next thing. So you, yeah. It's like, yeah. And they, so don't make, they don't make RB like they used to either. No, they don't, bro. Yeah, because the light, the, the, I guess the culture, sorry, not the culture, society's not like that. But it is like that, though. Mm-hmm. It is, is it? bro. It's it the same is, people bro. here. Yeah, it is. Because remember, bro. R&B before was about, like, all the things your man won't do. Even The funny thing is, Joe Why was... Why do you always refer to that Allow me, man. Allow me, man. The thing is about... Fat, I mean, fat Joe, the thing about Joe, yeah, is yeah. Joe yeah. was talking about stealing your woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was doing it in such a nice it way. Smooth, like bro. It, weren't, it weren't disrespectful. It was yeah. like, all the things your man won't do. Like, what's kind of... That is disrespectful, like, man. It now, is. Like, now I was like, I'm going to take your... Yeah. 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 It's like... Remember, Joe saying, I'll take, I, I, I'll take I, I, your woman. Send her back. Yeah, and not, send her not back yeah. and call you after that, like, <laughs> God. But that's man, what I'm savage saving his life, bro. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's just society, society. No, it's not, it's though. It's the same savagery, but, like, it, they just did it smooth. Yeah, okay, there was cool. it's eloquence the same savagery. to it back day. There was mm. eloquence. Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, and the funny eloquence. thing is, man is saying, I want to take your girl and look after her. I don't want to give her back to you. Yeah. Man not uh, saying, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, fuck yeah, your girl yeah. and drop her yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't want that bitch. Is that like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. R&B. Like, yeah. how am I supposed to vibe? To, like, you... like, back in the day, man will take your girl out and yeah. literally spend money on her, yeah. look after her, send her back. Yeah. But it's like, oh my God, I had such a great experience with him over there. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, get on your knees, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Call him. <laughs> Call him. <laughs> <laughs> Call him while I'm here. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, R&B is, is mad now. I remember, R&B, yeah. you can't make love to R&B now. I can't be making love and listen to that. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's disrespectful. Do you feel like because now rappers are singing, you think that changed R&B? Do you know what? I think it blurred this li- the lines that now, it's, it's weird. It's like, a long time ago, women wanted these guys that looked, in inverted commas, sweet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas as times change now, women kind of want... These fugs that sing, it's it's kind of changed. So the R and B, the look of the R and B singer has kind of changed now. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. tattoos on the neck, dreads, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. like a particular look. Now it's like, oh, yeah. we want bad boys that can sing. Yeah. Whereas yeah. before it was just rappers with the bad boys. Yeah, yeah. Singers yeah, with yeah, the yeah, sweet yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Made, yeah. you made a song, cool. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it's just like it's blurred. You don't know who's who. You know. And the thing is, you don't know where it's gonna go. Like, what can we do? What is what are the next generation gonna make? I don't. It's like. Don't know, you don't know. Yeah, it's honestly, crazy. it was so mad because I remember I called you the other day. I was watching. Have you seen the Crew League? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Saw something yeah but yeah. the Crew League is so because I don't know whether they're acting or not. No, no, no. It's, they're generally being yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah, being cool. Themselves. Yeah. So that's even better then. So yeah. because it allows them to show their personality amongst each other. Yeah, you can see who's the bad boy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. who's someone who's, I guess, just got money. Yeah, but yeah. he rolls with everyone because he's got money. Yeah. And you can see he was actually cool. Yeah. You could actually see it on the court, and yeah. then obviously with the um, scenes mm-hmm. when they um, sit them down outside, and cause there was a scene where um, I think Twenty One Savage it went viral the other day. We got the fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but Twenty One Savage was joking around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Homeboy, homeboy was t- he's a basketball serious? player by well, the you way. Try, you trying to get gangster? <laughs> 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 the way you said it. Oh, can you- <laughs> oh, he, you try to yeah, get yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, you know, you would have that conversation with like, listen, it's gonna be calm. Like, leave all the gangsters at home. Yeah. Just come and play basketball. So when the basketball player is trying to step into that world, he's yeah. like, wait, hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Am I gonna have to? Yeah. yeah so yeah. that was interesting to see, but it's yeah. sick because they got like Quavos in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Little, um, not little baby. Chris Brown. I see Chris, Chris Brown. Brown. Chris Brown. Chris still. Brown's one. Yeah, he's smoky. Two seasons in a row. Yeah. Damn. So that's why he's not in the fourth season. It's like. 
Can you can you play basketball like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to play ball in high, uh, high school. Yeah. You said soccer. What was your position in soccer? Uh, forward. I was a forward. Okay. I was fast. I was I was fast, but I, I couldn't. I, I I was a great passer, but you couldn't like, finish. I couldn't finish. <laughs> Fucking horrible, bro. It was bad. Nah. They're like, run to me, run, run, run to me. It's like, fuck it. Hell. I, I'll get the ball. Hell. Nice, nice assist. Dude. You should have been a winger then. I should have, like, bro. But if you're fast, you, on the oh, wing, yeah, you yeah. Can just cross it in. I don't know how yeah. your delivery would have been, though. I don't know. It, it didn't make it too far, bro. So you're better of your hands. I'm bow legged and I got skinny legs. It was, it was, it was bad. So, Yo, did you try NFL? NFL. American football. Did I try it? No, no, I, no. Hell no. But I played football when I, in high school. I ain't, no, I, ain't, I'm not, I wasn't good enough for the NFL. Mm -hmm. But basketball yeah. position were you in basketball? Oh, point guard. Okay. Yeah, point guard. I was team captain. Yeah, we were dope, man. It was fun. Like, you learn a lot about yourself playing sports. Like, because mm. our team was terrible, but then when our grade came, we started being ranked in the state and going to, uh, to, to state championships and tournaments. So it was dope. That's one thing I love about America that the, the emphasis that you put on, like, college sport yeah. and basketball. NFL football, like you've got like college games and stadiums yeah. with like 40,000, 35,000 yeah, people bro. full. Yeah, like bro. here, you don't have that. Why? Because it's weird. It's like the way the football is here, mm -hmm. they don't actually nurture the talent here like that. Really? So in America, for example, mm -hmm. because every college has got a sport, there's no way you can miss out on the best players because you would hear about this guy from Jackson State or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Florida yeah. or this guy from Oakland, like mm -hmm. he's the next best thing. So you, you won't miss these yeah, players. Where yeah. in the UK, for example, people are not really invested in college or university football like that here. Or no, really? no. Nah, nah, so you could have a, a player that's sick, like a really good footballer. But so what happens to him? So if you're if you're 15 here, mm. what happens if like you go to a U18 Arsenal? If you, if, if you don't if you don't have a connect. Like, because remember, for you to go to like Arsenal, Chelsea, whatever, mm -hmm. a lot of the time they've got people. If your parents are not taking you, for example, right, right, you're not really gonna go. Because more mm -hmm. times it's like people's parents would be like, oh, I've took my kid to the Arsenal yeah. Academy. Then over years, you might be in the under eights, under nines, tens. Then they start footing out who's good, who's not. Then you move around the system. Whereas mm. if you haven't got a parent, for example, that can take you to football games, it's on your back what you do. So you're hoping the scout will see you wow. and bring you over. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's very different here. So there's a lot of talented people. A lot of talent goes like, to waste. Oh, so you've seen some people like, yo, he's better than Bro. anybody playing right now. All the time. There's, and a, there's, a, there's, a guy, there's a guy in Northwest right now called um, Magic. When he was younger, he was small, mm -hmm. very small. And mm -hmm. they were like, you're, you're too small. But mm -hmm. ask anyone in Northwest, I'll tell you, he's one of the best football players I've ever seen. Wow. And but, just... Yeah, just... No, but, no. Yeah, just said that you're too small. And it's like, he's like Messi's, I guess. I don't, wow. know, if he, I don't know if he's Messi's height. Wow. But he's of Messi's frame, but his tech... Technical ability, incredible through the roof. But just over here, small. we wanted like there was a thing about being tall and powerful. Mm -hmm. So English football, a long time ago, was like you have to be big, strong, whatever. Whereas Italian, Spanish, they were like, nah. If you if you're technical, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. technical always beats power mm -hmm. and speed and whatever because we'll just play the ball around you. You'll mm -hmm. get tired, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. we'll just ticky tack a football and whatever. So I think now Britain have kind of incorporated it. They're like. Um, power and strength is important, mm -hmm. but if you've got technical ability, that's good as well. So they've kind of embraced both. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of changed the philosophy for you. But a long time ago, if you were too small, you just weren't making it. Like you knew Jesus. already. So even, even for example, you know, like in a big sporting uh, events in America, mm -hmm. you have like a halftime show. Yeah, yeah. You don't have that here. Yeah, I don't have that what? You don't have that here. Well, I think we're more money hungry. I think that's what it is. I think we capitalize. I don't think it's about the kids. I think it's like, this is a product. Yeah, yeah. We can make money off of this product. High school, okay. Let's, let's, sorry. let's build the hype up because we're going to make money off of him. That's why the, uh, the basketball guy, the kid, Wimbiana, the Victor Wimbiana, the seven five. Yeah, 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 the new guy. The new guy. Madness. Yo, the NBA is grooming him now because they know, they're building the hype up knowing that when he comes... Let's, we're gonna make more money, so yeah. they're showing, they're exposing him now in I guess France. So, yeah. so it's not about it's yes, it it takes care of the kids, but it's the money. Like even the the where it goes wrong, I think here you guys can make money as professionals. Like when with the kids are like seventeen, eighteen, they're, they're getting paid by the, the the yeah. You sign a pro contract when you're like sixteen, seventeen. Right. Yeah, yeah. The kids will go to college, get a scholarship, but we'll, it changed now. But like before, for like. 70 years they're playing for free 
And yeah. the college is making millions off of these kids. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was always, it was exploiting the situation. But Wait, the kids that are playing in college are playing for free? The kids that are playing in college until last year, two years now, they're playing for free. I didn't know that. You didn't but, know that. But I think they see it as because they're giving you education. Because remember this, if, if you weren't under this scholarship, you'd have to pay to go to college. But you're not, but if you're you really good, you don't, you're not going to spend the four years. They're not, they're not paying for your, it, yes, it's a ploy to get them to go. Okay. But no, bro, like you're bringing in millions of dollars. Like you're bringing your Revenue school a hundred million dollars and you're, okay, enough my you. best friend, he went to the league when I, when we, when he graduated, but my best friend is the biggest player on our campus. ESPN showing him everything, like all every other week. And he's in this dorm and he's like, yo, bro, you got like any money for some food? So that's when I realized, yo, you're just a product. Like, mm. they don't care about you. Would, would Nike sponsor them or anything like that? Or... The school. Oh, serious? Yeah, it was oh, the school. Come nah. to the school. Yeah, the school oh. gets all of that. So in t like two years ago, that's, I think it was NIL deals. Well, now kids are, now the top kids are now able to get like, or oh, deal with uh, Nike or Ford or Porsche. And then now they're getting paid. But, bro, like, the whole time sports have been going on in college, the school was getting paid, everything. Like, jersey sales, the school. If they, <laughs> It's so crazy. He's like, yo, he wore number 24, and he was like, yo, every kid on our college campus at one time had his jersey on. And it's like, they're getting that money. Yeah. And he's like, yo, I can't even eat, bro. You know, so it was like, it was crazy. And they expect him to perform, you know? Yeah. But then you're like, I got to perform because I want to go to the NFL. Yeah. So it's it's like low-key slavery a little bit, you know? It's like, go work, you know? And if you're good enough, then you go to the next level. So it's crazy. I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. I, I, I didn't yeah. know that still. Yeah, yeah. Now maybe it's better over here then. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, so let's talk about um, you and your, your missus. Um, You've got like a wellness yeah. thing going on as well. So how did that start? Tell us about that. So uh, during the pandemic, man, we were like, damn, we need to make something that gives people hope, makes people feel good. And we were like, you know, let's create, let's control our content. We're posting all these pictures of us. Yeah. Like, let's get paid for this. Like, why is Instagram getting paid off our stuff? You know, we had that mindset. So we were like, you know, what? let's create something where people can see our life. People can get affirmations. People can get tips to cook. People can get anything. And then we're like, yo, we're about to have a kid. So if they follow us, and this is right before OnlyFans came out. So we had the idea before now, like, you're paying a subscription for your personal whatever. So we're like, yo, like, let's just do it. Let's make our own thing and take take uh, away the power that Instagram, Facebook, Twitter has and just make something that makes people feel good. And so it's like a five, it's called For the Better, and people pay $5 a month um, just to get our exclusive, how we are, if we argue, if we this, how how I am as a father, how she is as a mom, how I'm, what I'm dealing with, like so, and then also just like really, really like positive content, spiritual, um, and tips to life. So it was dope, man. It was like you know, let's let's be innovative. Let's figure out what we can do for our people, and our true fans can join in and, and go on our journey. How is it on the daily though, in terms of finding the content for that? In terms of, because I know it must be hard, but it's how do you find the content to say, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. No, I, at this point, it's her thing. Okay. Yeah, so she's the one that, you know, she'll be like, can you send me, if I'm away, she'll be like, can you send me how you feel right now about being in London and how your thing went last night? Okay. Yeah, so like, instead of putting it on Instagram, my story, like, yo, this is what I feel, da-da-da-da, they'll get the real of what's going on. And so she'll, she, I gave that to her, I created that for her, she's, you know, but now she's, you know, running it and she does her own thing. So now she's pregnant, you know, so she's going through, um, motherhood and 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 hormones and all these things so <clears throat> and now we have a one-year-old as well so now she's showing that lifestyle so she'll hit me and just be like yo can you send me this can you send me this can you send me this so that's how we navigate but she has like affirmations you know set for you know months at a time that means we're gonna get a little feature on their tits <laughs> i was in london with free shots of tequila like word is born yes, sir, sir you know yes, sir. Word, is born. word is born i was like you know i really couldn't stand these niggas man you know, <laughs> you know <and> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, you know. We see it, we're like, we're like, yo, yeah. what's going on? Like, he's just cussing us. Like, I thought we were cool. Yeah, I hate them bloody niggas, man. They talk too much shit, man. Uh, what's it like when you like winning? Um, what's what's the different criteria from you know when you're selling music here? Yeah, yeah. and it's like 
gold, platinum. Yeah, yeah. What does that feel like? Whew, that's a great question, bro. So in today, right? So a lot of people don't know this. So back in the day, if you sold 500,000 copies, so somebody paid $1, yeah. if 500,000 people paid $1, that's a gold record. If a million people pay $1 for your single, that's a platinum record, right? In today's time, because of streaming, okay, so 150 streams equals one sale. Okay. 150 streams. Start to finish. E equals no, $1. Equals $1. That's mad. 150 streams equals $1. So to go gold in America, you have to have 75 million streams of your song. That's mental, bro. 150 million streams is a platinum song. So when uh, Love Rhythm or In My Bed went gold in the States, it was like, yo, 75 million people have played this record. Mm -hmm. Or how many people have like, yeah. 70, it streamed 75 mm -hmm. million times. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now to be able to do that, it means back in the day, you weren't. 75 million yeah, stream. Yeah. That's you get my, what I'm that's saying? Michael Jackson. Mm. Yeah, Never. that's Michael Jackson. Like, yeah. that's special. But now to get, not like, to get like, oh, he's dope. 75 million. So like that, so that, to answer your question, like that's why I was like, all right, it's an incredible feeling, bro. Who yeah. who, did, who calculated that? Like, why 150? Why not 100? Yeah, bro, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. That's how they make their money, bro. Because they... Who was it? Who 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 who? Um, Frostwire. What was it? Uh, yeah, Limewire. Limewire. Yeah, yeah. So that messed up the game. Mm. You know, that, <clears throat> that messed up the game. So they had to adapt. The labels had to adapt. So 150 uh, streams, one sale, so one dollar, bro. So for me to do it twice, like I have two of them, it's like damn, like okay, you can never take that away from me. Yeah, for real. But yeah. That, but that's so it makes kind of sense when I'm not saying when people say that people get blackballed in the game, but. It kind of makes sense then because if you're on playlists, mm -hmm. that's going to help your shit. Absolutely. Yeah. Because remember, if you're on a playlist, because a lot of people that don't know about new music yeah. will just follow a playlist and look at that playlist for what's popping. Mm -hmm. So if you are on those playlists, you're going to get more streams. You discover the okay. song. More yeah. then, discover. But then yeah. if I take you off every single playlist, yeah. Yeah. it's just purely your fan base. hoping who finds you. Yes. Then, then I guess the definition of Black Bull has changed then because Black Bull before would be like, for example, your affiliation with 50 yeah. might... Um, force other people not to mess with you. Yeah. So let's say someone who doesn't like Fifty mm -hmm. works for a label, works mm -hmm. for a radio station. Mm -hmm. They're like, nah, we're not yeah. playing none of his artists. So yeah. he can now say, oh, I'm being blackboard by so yeah. and so because of my affiliation with Fifty. Yeah. Whereas now, by not adding you to a playlist, yeah. obviously to some people it's like, well, that's not a big deal. If your, fan, if your fans want to, no, 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 I'm just saying. No, no, no. Because I heard, cause I, heard with I heard Ibra talking about it the other that's day. Yeah. Because yeah. the baby was saying. Yeah. Baby saying that like he, he got blacklisted black because he's black boy. Yeah. Because everyone, because little Boosie was like, how'd you go from selling is it 141k last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To 14 this year. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense. Something must be happening. Yeah. But then he's saying, or I don't even know if the baby said it. I think people are saying it for no, him. No, the baby said it, but then um, Ibra was saying, how can I blackball you? Whatever. But then. The people are saying, but the baby's been taken off because I think he was at head of Apple or something. Or oh. one yeah, he's yeah. So remember, he was head of um, oh Spotify. Is it marketing? No, Apple, 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 Apple. Yeah. So he yeah. was. So I think the baby was saying he's been taken off a lot of playlists. Yeah. So the baby was saying he's been blackboarded. And Ebro was saying, listen, if your fans want to find your music, they'll find it. But that's you, true. It's true. It, no, it's true to an extent. But what, what you've just said is very true. Discovery. That like in yeah. terms of discovering new discovering artists. new artists, and just in terms of what makes. Like from one dollar is one hundred and fifty plays. Yes, yeah. So technically speaking, if you put me on like for example, I know Spotify like big ones like Rap Caviar. Yeah. If you're on Rap Caviar, yeah. So many people might even just put it on shuffle. Not even like, listen to. Not your, even listening yeah, to your thing. So you're yeah. still getting plays. Yeah, yeah. Without even no, no, knowing, no, no, yeah. add into your catalog. Exactly. Right, whereas, right, I'm agreeing with no, you. I'm saying, I'm saying wh whereas now, like I, I have to go on your page. Yes. And click. And click. 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 And I might not do that because if I'm if I've just got loads of plays and I'm trying to hear stuff new, yeah, I might not actually go directly to the artist anymore. Yeah. So he's being cheeky with his answer then because his answer does stand, but mm -hmm. the environment in the in the building is we're not messing with little um the baby no mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm, so then why would now someone be go who's under you now say mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna add him to the playlist? Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't make sense. I, mm -hmm. I get why he said what he said mm -hmm. is to save his own back because technically I'm head of marketing. I ain't told anybody not to play you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you're talking about. Your mm -hmm. fans can find you. That is true. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, yes. it does help to be on the playlist, it's, bro. It's, it helps. Amazing. Because there's help. new music all the time. Mm. So, yeah. And people don't want to... People are lazy, bro. Like, I'm not going to... Oh, I got to go think about this person. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, no, it's yeah, like... Yeah. 
What's new? Boom. Oh, I like this. I add it. I've now have I've added something that I that was presented to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So that's why it's super important. Yeah. I know people are lazy, boy. I I um use the food delivery. I don't know what it's called. What's it called in America? Uber. Like an Uber, Uber Eats. Eats or like, yeah, Uber, yeah. 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 Or if I could see the restaurant. <laughs> I could see the restaurant from my house that I ordered from. <laughs> the driver's yeah. got there. He's like, I don't even need to drive. He just yeah. walks to my house. That's, that's how lazy you've gotten. Bro, it's I'm bad. lazy, man. Now you're rich. Well, that too. Yeah, you're, you're rich. You got money. You no, got but you money. know you order over a certain you're, you're, amount. Your is free. Because you're rich. <laughs> no, because they still add money on it. Yeah, service charge. Exactly. So, yeah, so, they do, so yeah. you could walk. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You, you've just fi- it's convenience though. Yeah, it's convenience. Pounds, it's convenience. convenience. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather pay five pounds. For, yeah, than I think. Than yeah, but it's it's a disguise for lazy. Yeah, it's lazy. Yeah, it's getting worse too. <laughs> it's a lot worse. worse. It's getting worse, bro. Do you think people have that approach towards like? Work, music, acting. Yeah, I think people have that approach to life, bro. Mm. Like everything is, what can I do to not do it? How can I get over this? How can I? How, what's the easy way? I think that's where we are at now. Like so, for me, like even just simple as a musician, I was like, what can I do that I did in the beginning to make this new record that I have yeah. go crazy? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, let me just hit my label up and yo, send me every DJ. In 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 from here to France to this to that, give me a list of a thousand. I'm gonna knock it out and knock out DJ drops, yo. But today, so I'll do it, and the DJ will be like, "Yo, you know the last time an artist did this, and like you don't have to do this, but the fact that you did this, bro, I'm playing it every day." Oh yeah, DJ. Oh yeah, 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 DJ. You're right. Yeah, you, you yeah, get what I'm yeah. saying? What up, yo? It's your boy Rotimi, DJ. Yeah. I'm rocking with you. They were like, they were like, artists don't do that. So that's why I'm like, really? They were like, bro. The last time somebody did that was when Ace Hood did the song in 2006. So that type of, you know, so that's why I like, I like, what can I do? My mindset is what can I do to be different? What can I do to just work hard? What can I do to control my narrative? Mm. A lot of people are just like, man, if I do it, cool. I'm in London, man. Fuck it. I'm chilling with it. Homie. Like, and I'm like, nah, like, I'm not trying to sleep. What I got to do, you know? And so that's what separates, you know, people. That's I, mad, though, because on top, remember when I used to do On Topic Talk Show? I used to get the guests to do the intro, mm-hmm. and I never thought about think I never thought about doing that for three shots. Wasn't just yeah, you know, what's happening, people, and blah blah blah. This is three shot, blah blah blah. Mm. Keen or Marvin, Abby, take the black, whatever, and just inserting it in the middle, or just in the you know, like if something a subject oh, changes. Oh, because you've done it with yeah. intros. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. But we used to, but we used to do the intro with. So we used to do members of the public. Okay. So I'd say to people, oh, if you want to be on three shots, just send in a voice note, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. So people used to send me voice notes, and I used to put that. And I think I went to America. We went to New York. And you got a couple of Americas. And I got a couple of well. America girls, And then that's the intro at the moment. Yeah, is yeah. That. But it's like, now you're saying it, it's like, oh, it's. it's you always stay on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the DJs also, play it, you know? Yeah. You'd be cause surprised. Because they, they feel like they're part of it. Yeah, yeah. They feel like it's their record. You know? And it's special as well because you've done something that it's not generic. Exactly. Exactly. I make it personal. So my for, for my new song, Make You Say, I was like, yo, like, I want to talk to you in the, in the drop like we know each other. You know, mm. not like, what's up, y'all? I'm rocking with It's like, yo, hey, blah, 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 blah. remember when you said, man, play it. Like, it's a vibe. It's And they feel comfortable. Like, I want to break this record because I know Rotin. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, and there's yeah. simple things that artists and people in just general don't don't go above and beyond. Yo, I, I, I remember, man, like, even just to check up on somebody. Like, we don't do that. We're so mm. focused on what we got to do that they be like, yo, you good? Everything Okay. Like, yeah, what's wrong? Our first reaction is, is everything good? Why? What happened? Da, da, da. Instead of just embracing, like, yo, like, I'm not just checking. I don't want nothing. Just checking on you, bro. He's, he's right, you know. It's very rare, bro. Don't post for 24 hours. Yeah, I've done that before. Don't people, message you. People start messaging you. Yeah, people, you're right. right. Yeah. It's been 24 hours. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't see what you were doing for 24 hours. That's basically what they're saying. I didn't see what you were doing. Like, yo, where'd you go? What happened? I'm just chilling, man. But it's weird, though. I had a conversation with someone yesterday, funny enough, and then they said to me, oh, um, you haven't asked how I am. Because we're just talking on the phone like this is a joke. Are you even asked? I am cracking joke. And I'm like, yeah, but the funny thing is that people say it, but do they really mean it though? They really mean because it. Because if I say to you, Taze, how are you doing? Living around, you're like, nah, bro, I'm not all right. Am I ready for this <laughs> conversation? Because <laughs> people say, yeah, hey, you're all right. But the moment someone says, no, I'm not, you know, um, whoa, <laughs> oh, buddy, yo, I got something <laughs> to do. Like, I'll bring you back there. Give me five minutes. Yeah, I'll be like, whew. <laughs> that nigga the <laughs> do you know what I'm saying people yeah. are not ready for that because remember like yeah. we're not ready to deal with certain things because you now have to listen yeah. and give either good advice or 
But are you no, ready but are you for supposed, that? No, but how, no, but listen how bad that is, bro. But, but, no, but I'm saying, but no, are you but, ready for it? Because remember, for yeah. example, like, look, think about it. Yeah. The two friends who said to you, yeah. should I do this? Yeah. One said, nah. Yeah. The other said, go go do it. Yeah. Two sets so, of advice. Yeah, yeah. One was bad, one it was, was good, good. Yeah. And none of them have had training. Did yeah. you call him back? Say one time. Did, did you call him back when you got the when you got Oh, the job? yeah, 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 yeah. You told me not to do this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, I, I gave him some money too, bro. Yeah, I gave him some bread. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I said, for you telling me no. Like, fuck you, bro. Don't ever come back <laughs> on my pocket. Hey, remember that guy that was. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, that's, that's, um, that's growth. Yeah. Because a lot of people mm. will be like, they might hold a grudge or whatever. You're like, yeah. do you know what? But you remember, there was no malice in it. I think nah, he just looked no. at it from his point of view, like, nah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, he was like, it wasn't like, don't, it was more like, bro, you have 5,000. It makes no sense. Like, you're going out on a whim, and it's his perspective. He wouldn't, like you said, he wouldn't do yeah, that. He yeah, wouldn't yeah. take that risk. One, one is like, bro, you tripping if you don't go. Yeah, yeah you and, have to, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to Hollywood or it comes to those kind of things, you have to. You can't, it's, it's better for you to go somewhere and it don't work. Yeah. Then you not go and always think, what if? Because you would have seen power on TV. I would have been sick. Seen bro. it blown up and be like, oh my so God. So that nigga was supposed to be me? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I yeah. can only imagine, bro. You played out, you played Dre very well. Though. I was going to ask, bro. when I asked him, um, where did you grow up? The reason I asked is because where did you get like. Oh, the Dre, yeah. Yeah, yeah the knowledge the to play Dre well. I grew up around a lot of Dre's, bro. See, I told you. Yeah, I grew up a lot. I, I said this before you came in. No, you yeah. didn't. Yeah. Brent. <laughs> no, you didn't say that. She d- Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but I said it though. Nigga, no, no, didn't no, say no. That. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. When I when I said yeah, mm-hmm. uh, one of the main questions I wanted to ask him mm. was where he got the the as in the knowledge to play Dre. That's yeah. it. And it, no, no, your response was what? Are you trying to say he grew up around snakes? Yeah. No. I Someone said that. Someone no, said that. No, no. I tried to say, you trying to say he's a snake. Because of the character you played. Exactly. And, yeah. I, and, and So I wasn't the same thing. I think it was a little joke. You say, wait, try to tell you, man's a snake. Anyway. Exactly. You don't she knows, she knows, she no, knows. No, anyway. Brent was here. You didn't get to that point. <laughs> no, no, I, don't lie, bro. I'm, I'm talking to... Uh, What's going yeah. on here? So you grew up around a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. Dre's, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So like, I'd have a friend, he'd walk like this. I had a friend that would like, if you look at him and he stares at you, you know you're in trouble. I had a friend that was like, <laughs> if he looks at you, you know he's lying. So like, I took different aspects of what I grew up with, and then I watched a lot of um, uh, uh, shit, I'm blanking, um, Robert De Niro, okay, in Casino, okay. And my first season, I didn't have that many lines, so I was like, how can I make an impact that they'll bring me back? And I did a lot of things with my eyes. So you're like, oh, you can't trust him. Oh, you can't. Oh, yep, yep, just, yep, yep, yep. oh he's up to something. What is he going to say? And then it'll be like, nah, I'm good. He's not really good. Oh, shit. What's going on? You know what I mean? So like I studied I studied how, because I didn't take training. Yeah, so I had to yeah, learn yeah, on, on the, the go. Job, yeah, 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 you know. And so I had great mentors, though, like with, with Kelsey Graham and then Amari, Amari Hardwood, who played Ghost. And he took me on his wing. He was like, "Look, I know you have. I don't have. I don't. I know you don't have any training, but come watch a movie with me." So we went to go watch this um, Johnny Depp movie where I think he was like an informant. Okay. Uh, he was an FBI informant, like he was a snake or something like that. And he's like, "Watch his body movement. Watch how he does this. Watch how he lies." Look, did you see that? He probably looked at camera left and did it. So I'm. You know, now you you're must, saying you must that, have been yeah. pissing people off in the cinema, boy. Yeah, it's loud as fuck. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's horrible. You know, now you're saying that, yeah. Yeah. Like on sc- how you've translated that on screen is very well. Like every time I watch Power, I'm like, Pop. like I get what you, I get yeah. what you're trying to do. You're trying yeah. to be the biggest drug dealer in New York. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. But the way you were going about it was very shady. But yeah. you got it. You translated it very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's sick, man. But so, I had to create that. You know, like for example, right? My character was supposed to die in season three. He was like. It was it was written that Dre is gonna be on season two, and he gets thrown into a garbage can by a ghost in season three. But because of the nuances that I had, because of like the the the, the scenes I would steal, it was like oh we gotta we gotta write something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta people, create... people it's like a, not anti hero, but people love they hate you, but they love you at the same time. It's like yeah. they, you need this character you in need here this character. for the balance. Well, you never ever felt ready. What do you mean? Like I never I like I never ever had the um. Well, whilst I was watching the show, I never yeah. thought like, yeah, you're gonna be the boss at some point. I don't really? know what it. Yeah, no, no. But he was. No, nah, it, tempor- it was temporary though. Temporary. Yeah, yeah. But, that, but, but, but that's what it felt like. It felt yeah. like once you got there, it's you like, weren't oh, even ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. respect yeah. me. I was a boss, bro. Above his acting, I, was a, bro. I was a boss at one point. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. like yeah. this is kind of nigga. Because there's a because there's a nigga that I'm sitting on my right, talking that shit and shit, looking at me and all that, man. Like, 
So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of the character that he was beefing. <laughs> I can't remember his hey. name though. It was like the was it Latina Don. Um, shoot. Uh, uh, damn, I bro. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, fuck but, it, yeah. yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. There oh, was... um, I know the real name. Fuck, I forgot the character. Uh, the one that the I set him up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Damn, it's he was crazy. on to you. He was yeah. like, you know, when you know a man's like, you can say like, for example, I might hire someone, and you're like, Jesus, yeah. I don't know, man. But I'm like, boy, if you look at his rap sheet, he deserves it. But let me say, let me say something, right? So after season three and everything was like fire, like it was killing, everything was moving dope. The creator, Courtney, came to me. She was like, so look, do you want to be... Because at one point, remember, Dre was Ghost's protege. Yeah, yeah. Like, so everybody was like, yo, he's grooming him to be... The next, the next one. one. Yeah, Ghost Point 2.0. And she, she called me in the office. She was like, look, do you want to be Ghost 2.0 where, yeah, Dre has a daughter and then he's learning and then everybody's kumbaya and you become Ghost 2.0? Or we're about to kill the Lobos character. There is no villain. Do you want to be the villain? I said, and it was like, one, it was like, damn, you really asking me to choose the direction of, yeah, yeah, that's of sick, a though. legendary show? Yeah. I was like, nah, there's already a ghost. There's already a Mari. Let me be the let me be the guy, yo. Because it, 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 it's, there's too many, there's no, there's, there's only one Dre. Mm. There's, it can't be Ghost 2.0, you know? And so that's why they ended up making Tariq goes 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But like it was it was like, Dad, do you want to do this? And I said, absolutely. I'll definitely be the villain. And I didn't know what it would be, but yeah, I think it was the best decision for me. There's a few things that have upset, have upset yeah. me in life. Killing Ghost is, is up there still. Yeah. <laughs> when they kill Ghost, I said, nah, I'm not watching this ever again. Because yeah. it's just like, Ghost is yeah. Ghost, is ghost, ghost, bro. Like, yeah. just, you know that man Wait, is... wait, hold on. Hold on. No, I, no. I, I, no, wait, wait. I, I can't let you finish that sentence. What did he say before we started recording? What? What, what did he say before we started recording? What? Yeah, well, I don't watch it. I, I, don't, I, no, I, I, I don't watch it. I don't watch Power. But I've seen, but I've seen episodes. I don't watch but, it. But I'm upset they it. killed Ghost. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> what? I am. Nah. I am. Yeah. I am. Wait. Are we, we talking about? Are you gonna ask like? What are you talking about? Yo, so this nigga was talking about. <laughs> he said, I forgot what he said. He said some shit about. <laughs> hey. Brother, you, the nah. thing is, you, went, you know me, yeah? <laughs> the, when it comes to programs, yeah? When it comes to programs, yeah? Yeah. I never watch a series. I just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. From social media, or if I'm in someone's house and they're watching it, I'll watch. Off the shade, uh, uh, what? <laughs> shade room. What? You watch clips are you, on you the shade You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> when I'm going to certain people's houses or whatever, whatever, no names. Yeah. I'll watch episodes that they're watching. So I'll kind of, I might watch three on one day. Mm. I won't watch one for ages. I'll see a clip here, clip there. Then I watch it's another disgusting. one. So I'm seeing stuff. <laughs> but then when I saw Ghost die, I said. Uh, I'm not even going back yeah. because. So what did you think this was Tariq or something? Like, I, 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 just double, just double checking. Uh, well, Sean, I don't know. Like, who did you think was sitting right here? Brother, you thought, you I'm thought, just saying. I'm you, just thought, you, you thought Nutrino was Cave. Oh, don't, don't, don't do that. Yes, Nutrino <laughs> came on there and he said he thought he was the the nigga who was singing on Twenty One Seconds. How dare you? That's How easy, dare you? That's an easy mistake to no, make. It's not. No, it's it not. Is, no, it's not. No, it's not. Man said no. I was hurt. They killed Ghost. Yeah. I was hurt though. <laughs> But the fact, that's what I'm saying. The, yeah. the thing about power is, yeah. even if you didn't watch it, you knew all the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you invested. That's how big the show you was. You invested, yeah. Whether you, if you like, and the thing about 50, yeah, 50 will post something that's got nothing to do with um, power mm -hmm. and then just say, get the strap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something, something cognac. Yeah. Power. And he's power. So then, it, out of the blue, you've kind of like, you've read the caption and you've heard of something that you didn't mm -hmm. know before because yeah. the way 50's done it. Yeah. So I'm saying, in terms of power, you would see different characters, and Ghost was just a guy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he was, he was, yeah, he was. He was, he was very So, I mean, even the way he used to do his his, 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 um, his moves, yeah, yeah. He's he was he, The way he used to wear his suit. And the night techs. When he changed into the tech, yeah, yeah. He what, was on on the murder, when he's doing a job, yeah, when yeah, he jumps. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. When he puts the, the, the black hat on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ghost, Ghost <laughs> business still. I like Tommy as well. Yeah, 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 he's good. Yeah. They're, they're, again, man, like, the one thing I say about the show is that everybody was super competitive. So like everybody, no one was a star before Power. Yeah. Like no, Amari, he was the guy that you're like, I've seen him before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. Nateri is like, oh, wasn't she in 3LW? Yeah, 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 it's true. No one, no one, but they were all working for 20 years or so. So it was like, we got to build this and love to Amari because he made it where it's a team. I'm the quarterback. I need to trust I can throw the ball to my wide receiver. I need to trust that. I can hand it off to my running back. It became like a unit. So when me and him would have scenes, I'm going into it like we're about to battle. 
because it's like you're not gonna show me up, bro. Like you're a monster at what you do, but I'm I'm him, you yeah, know. Yeah, and that yeah. that mentality, and that's what pushed the show. So Joe Shakur, who played Tommy, same way, like sweet guy. But when it came down to it, it's like, all right, bro, bring it today. And it's like, yeah, I'm here with you. What's up? It's that energy, yeah. and that's what made us become that show. That's why um, a lot of shows don't have that because ego would be involved. Yeah. And, I'm the star and you're this. We became like we made these characters. You know what I'm saying? And so it's a it's a, it's a special type of love. Very well on screen. Yeah. See, they said in terms of um, Robert De Niro, like yeah. you watch Robert De Niro. What other actors did you watch? Because for me, yeah, Robert De Niro's a great. Al Pacino's a great. Yeah, um, Leonardo DiCaprio is another great. Mm -hmm. But like, who do you reference in terms of like who would you look at when you're trying to learn? Who else were you looking at? Sorry, I was looking at uh, Edward Norton. Edward Norton, yeah, Fight Club, called. Fight Club, yeah, yeah, bad, uh, bad, bad, Primal yeah. Fear, um, Joe Pesci, you know, yeah. yeah he um, does a mad one, Madman very well though. Yeah, yeah. The unhinged psychopath that yeah. will just laugh at you one minute and stab you in a car park. Exactly. <laughs> so like, so in terms of Dre, those are the ones I watched, and then you know, of course, the Denzels, um, Jamie, um, who else? Meryl Streep is incredible. Like Meryl Streep, whatever with her eyes, it's like it tells. Meryl so much. Streep, that's the one in um, Fatal Attraction. Yeah, yeah. You, you know about it. You know about it before. I've been seeing you, man. You know like, this nigga didn't even know about Meryl Streep. He said, "I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about." No, you don't, bro. No, gonna, <laughs> my follow-up question was going to be yeah. like, who would you say people should look out for, as in like future actors in uh, America? Because I know you're featured in um. The new house party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, our our friend is actually the lead, Tosin. Yeah, Tosin's my guy. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Tosin's doing fam, big. He's doing big doing things, big you know. Yeah, bro. We did um a movie called Burning Sands together. That's how I met him. And if you haven't watched it, incredible. Um, but real dude, man. That's like my family. Like, I, I, he's one. Uh, damn, you know what's crazy? Like. The UK actors are... There's a lot of us in here. Mm. Beastie, bro. And, like, y'all do American accents better than us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, it's weird, yo. But, um, but no, um, John Boyega, for sure. That's another one of my brothers, you know. Um, but Tosin, um, me. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, so you said you got a single coming out. Do you yeah. want to let everyone know the name, where, where they can get it? And yeah. So the new the new record that's out right now is called Make You Say. Um, it's available everywhere. You know, for me... Um, uh, I, work, I worked with Akon on it. Me, Akon wrote this. And um, it's special, man. It just feels good. I wanted to take the I'm a piano vibe and put my R&B vibe, my voice on it. And I wanted to create something that is different but is refreshing. It feels like Afro EDM but pop but R&B and, and everything just mixed in one. And it's, and it's, it's a feel-good record, man. Feel-good record. I'm proud of this one. Is that what you tend to do in terms of, like, a lot of your records tend to be very much like happy music. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to recreate all the time? Or Yeah, like I, I just want to make music that, if you look, right, the records that make you feel good are the ones that last forever. Yeah, yeah. It's timeless, you know? So like, In My Bed is, will never go away. Love Rhythm will never go away. Whenever you hear, baby, baby, yeah, it'll never go away because sonically that's just a happy sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So like, records that just feel open, good, they test. They they stand the test of time, and that's what I wanted to do, man. I don't. That's why I don't drop as much as I. I just make moments when I do it, and that's and I love that. Do you feel like you're gonna one day say, do you know what? I'm just gonna stop the acting mm. and just concentrate on the music, or are you at a point now where you're like, I love both. I'm yeah. just gonna do both. I'm, I'm at that point where I love both. I'm gonna do both, and because I've seen it happen, like again, Mo, like, and Amari put it best. Like we had just finished one of the seasons, and he was like, yo, give it up for Rotimi because he's on the number one show and has the number one R&B album in the country right now. And I didn't think of it like that, yeah. but it's like, oh, shit, like, the goal is now to be on the number one movie and have the number one single, you know, and it becomes that. So I've seen it, I've felt it, and I know it can happen, you know, so I wouldn't shortchange, you know. And it doesn't take long to shoot a movie. It takes three weeks to shoot a movie, you know, four weeks. If you're on the Batmans and Marvels, yeah, it'll take six months, whatever. Yeah. But like, movies are a month of your time, and and TV shows take time. But if you do it right, and I've seen the the the, the outline, yeah, you can you can do both if you're dope. If you're actually dope, you can do both. That's mad. Yeah. And also, lastly, the, that photographic memory thing. Yeah. 
So what, you just look at a, a script and go, Yeah. Is it a certain amount of time you need to look at it or and it's just that's in your mind? So basically it'll be like, I look at the script, I see what I'm supposed to say, and it'll take to get it like a page, to get a page and memorize it, maybe a minute. What? Yeah. Do you know what the maddest thing is? I thought I was gonna say yeah, about two days, forty-five minutes, no, an minute, hour, a minute, a minute, two minutes, no, two minutes, minutes, two minutes to comfortably to get the. But I can't of... retain it after I do it. Like I, oh. if I do it, I'm like, all right. So that's why, for example, when I, when, I, when I have an audition, I'll get it. I don't even try to open it sometimes because if I start looking at it, I'm like, fuck, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. So I wait when I'm like, all right, let me just study this in the morning real quick. All right, let's shoot this. So I get it. I'm like, ooh, 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 a minute, two minutes. Three minutes, all right, I got it. Let's do it. Do do do. It's all. It's out. Once I deliver it, it's out. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can't. I can't. But oh, I thought you meant retain it. I was oh, so, that means, so your short term memory is is in, it's photographic. It's like uh, time. boom. It's like this. I was thinking, you have a wizard in the room, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, no, but like, still a, but no. still a wizard, bro. No, I know, but to retain it, no, no, no but look, no, but look, you can't. but if I have to actually learn do it. learn it, ah, uh, hmm, an hour. An hour to learn it and feel comfortable and know my movements and this and this and yeah. this. Like an hour to consistently do it. Yeah, an hour. So that minute that you're doing it in, yeah. is it just you purely learning the lines or you in your head adding the movement to the lines? Yes. Jeez, so, yes, that's yes. a lot, bro. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To so get the like, gist of what's going but on. But I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, and I'm like, oh, that didn't feel right. So I'll do it again. Mm, that didn't feel right. Uh, I'll do it again. Okay, I like that. I like that. So I'm working it out while I'm recording whatever. I'm working out. You know, because when it comes out or how the person delivers it back will change the, yeah. the, the the reaction. So then I got it. Yeah. So it's, but then when they're like, all right, we good? I'm like, oh, fuck. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. I think actually, I, I want to see, I want to see, like when you went to, um, was it New York or LA? Yeah, yeah. When like, you were New on York, set with New York, the New York, New York the, um, yeah. the Google ad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like seeing, cut, do it again, cut, because that must oh, get yeah. boring. Yeah, for, not, for for someone viewing it. No, nah, not really, you know, because for me it was just an experience. So my, our guy Daps mm. was like a director, so yeah. he directed the Google advert. I don't know if you've seen a new one with Jason Tatum, Giannis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, jo that. Joel and B. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was in New York, but we couldn't film because people couldn't know about the advert yet. Ah. So we just went on the. I think we went. I think it was in Manhattan. So we went there and we just sat down in that the director's chairs and just watching mm. the way they were moving stuff around the uh, cameras. Mm -hmm. But some of the cameras are worth like 250,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big cameras. Some yeah. of the angles in that advert is mad. Yeah, yeah. But, then, but then you see the way they do certain clips. The funny thing is they don't actually record it that many times because they've literally, one, one guy's got like an iPad so you can see what's going on in the camera. Mm -hmm. There's another like camera that's like, you can see, it's like a, there's like a thing above it and you can mm. kind of look. Yeah, yeah, look into it, it. yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's just kind of like the moment they say um, action, they mm. film it. Mm. And then it's weird, when, you do, when they're doing it with actors, mm. it's very smooth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I walk up to you and say, listen, that was great, but give me a favor, can you just do it like this? Yeah. You will nail it. Yeah. Whereas if it's a member of the public that you're, that you're putting in that, yeah. you might have to tell them a few more, more times because they're yeah. not used to it. Mm. Yeah. So I saw that difference yeah. between the acting quality of actual yeah. actors yeah, yeah, yeah. and members of the public that were just filling Iceland, in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could see the difference, but generally speaking, it was a smooth process because yeah. everyone knew what it was they wanted to do. So people knew. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. weird, it was weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's dope, man. It's a, it's a cool experience. It's, it's, it's one of those things where... Yeah, you're just doing the same thing, but again, like for example, I'll use power. Like, you couldn't take a take off. You couldn't like we we'll do action, cut, action, cut. So, if you're doing something on another show, you'd be like, oh, I'm a little tired. Let me, I, I, I'll deliver the lines, whatever. But with power, it was so competitive that yeah. every time we did it, you had to bring it or be better than the last time. Like, oh, you doing that? All right, what's up? It's like if oh you. Oh, that was a cool move. So let me let me go here with how you respond. And it's like, it's 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 human interaction. You get oh. what I'm saying? But it's just who can master themselves, basically. The and most. I guess it helps when everyone's a team. Yeah, like it said. helps. It helps. It's a comfort level, and you know you're working together. You know what I mean? But like other times, it'll be like, for, okay. So for example, right? If I'm if I'm filming you, and you're on camera. And sometimes I would have to read off camera to give you the energy. So if it's on you, the camera can take your energy, right? Yeah. So other shows, after I've done, after it was on me, 
and you're reading for me and you're giving me energy the same way it was when we're both on camera, mm. that person on other shows now is like, all right, so yes, we did this, do 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 do. And it's like, bro, it's it's no love there. Yeah. So you gotta now fight through the you're hearing it dry, but you gotta fight through the bullshit. And so like that that sh that happens a lot. Like people aren't really like a, a team like how power was. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So But I think power, yeah. because it was part of the culture, I feel like that was a difference. It's kinda like because you know, like you might do a um, a film and mm -hmm. I'm not saying people are not gonna watch it, but you put it out and you're hoping that it is received well. Whereas right. power was mm -hmm. like it was kind of in the culture. Yeah. So if you have a bad performance on Power, it's like you feel like all your friends are going to see it. Yeah. Everyone's going to see it. Absolutely. So you can't, you can't not show out. Yeah. It's like yeah. college football. Yeah. Like everyone's watching you, bro. Yeah. Even though I'm not getting paid by the school, yeah. I have to show up because NFL might yes. be going to take me. Yes. And everyone's watching. So yes. it seems like Power had that kind of dynamic oh, that like, yes. it was, you know what I'm saying? It was pressure, bro. It was, because you know you're walking on to something that, oh, this is, this is legendary. Everything I do right now is going to be remembered. And that mindset, it's a different experience, man. It's, mm. and, and I've been, been able to carry that feeling with music, with this, with this, and everything I do. So, yeah, it was, it was great. I know this is on the spot, yeah, but just before we wrap up, yeah, yeah. last before we wrap up, is there a quote that you want to leave us with? That's mm. kind of helped you with your journey. Help me with my journey. Don't die for Nyash. What? What's going on? <laughs> what? No? No? Mm. That's trust a good one though. Take that one back to America. I got you. I got you. I'd say, I mean, I'd, I'd say trust your intuition. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Bet on yourself. Yeah. Oh, no. Bet on yourself. That, 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 that's my favorite quote. Yeah. Trust your intuition. <laughs> Yo, these niggas be lying. <laughs> Bro. Uh, thanks for coming on. <laughs> that's what LeBron done, isn't it? That's, there's a whole thing I lied about LeBron. It? So there's one thing he done, and someone says a quote, and LeBron's like, that's you have a favorite quote, quote? Yeah. Like, LeBron, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, heard that quote before, he man. He's a liar, man. Yeah. But, oh, but there's no time, is. Yeah. LeBron's a liar, but he's one of the greatest basketball <laughs> nah, players. I hear that. So you, just, you just gotta let him off. Yeah, like, yeah. he used to be right at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my favorite quote. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, bro. Thank you, love, my brother. Appreciate love, it, man. Love, love, love.